In this presentation, we're going to create a sales receipt and we're going to apply that to a sub customer or a job. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. You'll recall in a prior presentation, we set up sub customers or jobs, which we then created this project file with. So if we go into the project tab down below, we've got our sub customers for uh, Jones Guitars and Sam the Guitar Man at 3005 and 4002. What we're gonna do now is create a sales receipt and apply it to those sub customers. Let's take a look at that. We're gonna go up top and go to the plus button. We're then gonna say it's gonna be money in. We're gonna say make a sales receipt. So we will enter then a sales receipt. First one's gonna be for uh, Sam the Guitar Man, but for the job 4002. So if I select the drop down, we could see it there, or of course we can simply type in the job number. As I, jo as I type in the job number, note that it picks up both the uh, customer as well as the job number. So that's the one we want. And don't let it throw you off that, or that whether you have the sub customer or the job or the job or the customer, it'll have the customer first and then the job number. So then we tab through this. We have the similar sales receipt or same sales receipt that we would expect. We're going to keep the date on as January 31st. We're going to say that this is going to be a service item down below that we're going to have applied here. And we're going to call it a partial service. It's going to be the partial service. And we're going to say that there are, let's say, uh, 10 of them to give us a thousand dollar amount there's not going to be any effect in terms of sales tax because we're talking about a service as as opposed to an inventory item therefore straightforward sales receipt what happens with the sales receipt the sales receipt is going to increase the cash account in this case undeposited funds rather than the checking account indicated by this drop down the other side then go into some type of sales accounts in this case the sales for services as opposed to the sales of product no sales tax affected, no sales tax payable, no uh, inventory affected, no cost of goods sold affected. That's nice. Let's go ahead and say save and close and check, take a look at the financial statement. So I'm going to say save and close. We're then going to go down to the reports. So we are in then the reports. Let's open up the trustee trial balance. Since we have seen a sales receipt in the past, this time we want to look at it a bit more quickly as we can with a trial balance. So we'll open up that trustee trial balance and change the dates up top. Dates from 010120 to 123120. We're going to run that report. Then I'm going to duplicate the tab up top, right clicking on it and duplicating it. Then I'm going to close the hamburger. I'm going to hold down control and zoom up just a bit so we can see it a bit more at that 125. Then we can see in the undeposited funds, we have that 1000. If I select that 1000, and scroll down we have the 1000 from sam the guitar man the name and referencing the job or project number scrolling over to the right we see that 1000 as well back up top back to the trial bounds other side is going to be on the uh, income statement under sales not the sale of the product but the other sales item where we are putting our service items we see the sam the guitar man increasing here on january 31st there's the other side of it a thousand dollars Going back up top to our um, to our trial balance. Now I'm going to go back to the prior tab. If we go back to the prior tab and then check out the new thing down here, which is the projects. So if we go into the projects tab on the left, scroll back down, and we are considering the Sam the Guitar Man now has the thousand dollars in the project. If we open up that item, then we have uh, more information related to the project. One thousand on the income for it at this point in time. If I was to select the income account, the income item here, it will then give us our, our transaction report, which will show once again that sales receipt that has been applied to that particular job. If I go back up top or, or sub customer, if I go back up top, we can go back to the prior screen and that's going to give us the details. So we won't spend a lot of time here, but you could see how this could be useful to help to track uh, projects. Also note that if we go up into the sales tab up top, and we go into the customers up top and we go down to uh, Sam the Guitar Man. That's whose project we were taking a look at. And we go into Sam the Guitar Man for the detail in the customer. Sometimes it's useful when you look at these reports to close the tab to the left because they can be kind of wide reports. There we see our sales receipt. So we have the sales receipt for the project 5002 and there's uh, the $1,000. So that's another way to get into the sales receipt and analyze the information by both uh, project or job 
or a sub customer or um, and by customer. So I'm going to go back up top and uh, that was a good time. So let's do it one more time for that other uh, job that we set up, that other subcontract or sub customer, I mean. So we're going to go back up top and say new and I'm going to make a uh, make a sale, another sales receipt that we will be creating. If we select then the drop down, or I'll just type it in there. We're going to say it's going to be the job 3005, and that's going to be, so there it is. That's the one we want. So it's going to once again give the customer first and then the job number or the sub customer number. For tabbing through this, it looks just like any other sales receipt at this point in time. We're then going to go down to the product. We're going to keep the date, by the way, at January 31st, 2020. Down below, I'm going to once again call this a service item. So I'm going to say it's a partial service again. And we'll say here we have five. So we'll make it a nice even 500. So we'll keep it there. And that looks good. So what's going to happen in terms of financial statements? We know it's a sales receipt. Therefore, some kind of cash is going to be going up. Either the checking account or in our case, undeposited funds. Other side is going to be going to sales. In this case, not the sales, um, not the uh product sales but service sales service sales then increasing on the income statement no effect on inventory no effect on cost of goods sold no sales tax very nice we're going to say save and close and then we'll analyze this one let's go to our reports on the right and just consider this holding down control scrolling up we can take a look at the undeposited funds so if we go into the undeposited funds and scroll on down there is our 3005 indicated by the customer and the job there's the $500. If we click on that, then of course, it's going to take us to that sales receipt. Closing that back out, scrolling back up, and let's scroll back up here. We'll then go back to the trustee trial balance. Other side's going to be in sales. Here it is, not the sale of the product, but the sale of the service. That's going to be this number. And scrolling to the right, we see that, that uh, 500 here as well. And there's the sales receipt for 3005. Scrolling back up top, we're going to go back to the trial balance. This is where we are at this point in time. We're going to go ahead and print this out so you can check these trial balances after each section. Let's go back to the customer tab now and let's go down to the projects. If we go down to the projects, we can see that information per project once again. I'm going to hold down control, zoom back down to 100 so we can see those projects. We're in project 3005 now. If we select project 3005, it's going to track that information that we have assigned to the project. There it is. If I open up the income item, then it's going to give us that detailed report. And there's the sales receipt again. Scrolling back up top, we can go back then to the job tracking uh, information or the project tracking information and the sub customer tracking information. And we could also then go into the sales and the customers tab. And this was a job for jones guitars so if we go up to the jones guitars and select that item select that customer we can also see uh, that sales receipt so there's the sales receipt and it's also indicating the project within the sales receipt and of course the sales receipt has been paid as is typically the case when we make a sales receipt we get paid at the same point in time as the service was done